What's up everybody, it's Patrick from Evoke Bike. I wanna talk with you this week about mental toughness. Mental toughness, uh, I first heard about this actually as a musician. I was recommended a book called uh, Mental Toughness Training for Sport by James Lore. And I read this in preparing for music auditions actually. When you go to an audition, you sit down, you have a small selection of uh, piece that you're required to play and you play for a, a screen. It's very short, then you're done, and they pick whether or not you're gonna advance the next round. It's, it's a little intense, and you really have to get into the right state of mind to perform well at these auditions. And so that, that really requires a mental toughness. You really have to have a routine, something that you do so that you're gonna show up and you know you're gonna be ready to give it your best. And this obviously comes from sport because that's so critical. I mean, anytime you've seen an athlete that you admire, it, you admire them because they make it look easy. So there's actually a lot you can do to practice being that way yourself. You know, nobody gets there overnight. It doesn't just happen. It's, it's by a series of routines and reminders. You can develop this and actually train yourself to have better toughness. So I want to go over a couple of those ways that you can actually do that. So first things first, you have to have a pre-race routine. You know, routine, doing the same thing over and over will give you confidence that, you know, this is just like the training session. You know, if you show up to a race and you get anxious, well, if you've done the same exact thing in training over and over and over, you're not going to worry about it. So have a routine, you know, eat three hours before, get your 20 minute warm up, And then, you know, after you've done these seemingly basic things, give yourself a second, think about, get yourself in the right mindset to set off and give a personal best performance. So you gotta rely on your training. First of all, I mean, if you're trying to say, I'm relying on my training, you have to do the training. Like just simply doing your homework, being, um, effective with your time and knowing you've put in the work is going to give you a ton of confidence. So just having known you've put in the work should be a huge chip on your shoulder when it comes time to perform. You know, if you're trying to set a personal best, think back, look back in your training diary and say, okay, I did this 20 minute effort. I did this two hour one by ride. Tell yourself all of the little wins you've had along the way leading up to this attempted personal best performance or race or whatever it is. But you know, look at, look at the work you've done. Um, breathing, you know, this is such a, um, a topic that's often overlooked or not explored deep enough, but this is like just meditating. You know, if you've ever meditated, it's, it's about clearing your mind and just focusing on the breath. So when you do this, obviously you're gonna drift in and out of, especially if you're in an interval, if you're in a race, you're not gonna be able to just be thinking about your breathing all the time. But just like with meditating, your thoughts will drift and then you say, okay, my thoughts have drifted. Let's just get back to the breathing and stay focused. And that really helps me. Um, you know, if you're 10 minutes into a 20 minute interval and all of a sudden you start to doubt whether or not you have 10 more minutes of that in you. That I mean, if you've made it through 10, you probably have that next 10. If you're already, if you're not already blown, so that your your mind is just drifted. So focus on the breath, just breathe one pedal stroke at a time, and all of a sudden you realize that one minute has passed, two minutes has passed, four, four or five minutes has passed, and you're you're at that you're over that hump, and you only have a couple minutes left. That's all having the right mindset. Um, so another, uh, another thing you can do actually supplementing on caffeine is a really, really helpful way to, uh, reduce your perceived exertion. Caffeine has been shown to make it feel your rate of perceived exertion that you're not working as hard. So you start a two by 20 and you take a gel halfway through that first 20 minute effort. Well, you're, you're not really actually gonna be noticing the effects of that caffeine during that 20 minute effort, but when it comes time to do that second one, you're gonna actually 
be in much better shape. You'll have a little bit added focus because that perceived exertion is going to go down. Um, for me, if I'm just doing intervals, I love a 50, you know, 25 to 75 milligrams of caffeine. Middle of the road, 50 is probably a good place to start. Um, or if you're doing just a, a race, you know, Science and Sport makes a 150 milligram gel that's fantastic for that. Um, so like 150 is probably the upper end of what you want to be using. That's just, that's what works for me. Um, another really, really great way is doing longer intervals. You know, we talk about doing the one by interval all the time. It's just really just set out for, once you get to open road, set out and do a super steady ride. And just by doing that, by staying focused for that length of time, you're going to you're going to have to endure more. You're, you're going to have a better sense of what you're capable of. So just working on progressively longer intervals. When I started riding, I thought a 2x20 was like a pretty substantial interval. And it is. But if you work up to it, you're giving yourself, you know, like a trail of breadcrumbs to follow. You don't have to do it all at once. If you do first just a 5x5, five five, and then a 3x10, then a 3x12, then a two by 15, then all of a sudden you're, you're basically there. And then you just need to say, all right, I've done all these other intervals. Remember you, you go back to what you've already done. I've done these intervals. I know I can get this last couple of minutes and you dig deep and you get it done. So don't try to do something that's daunting all at once, kind of build up to it, especially when it comes to working at intensity. Um, that's just going to depend on, you know, your experience level, know your course, know your competition, know how many watts you've done for the duration of your event, whatever it is, acquire knowledge about what you're trying to do about your endeavor and make a list and put the pieces together of that list. Make sure if you, if you've done the things on the list, you know, you're going to be ready to compete. So the last piece of recommendation I have is, is find a mentor, find a coach, find somebody who's done what you want to be good at what you're trying to improve and pick their brain. I mean, copy what people who are good at, you look up to somebody, they're good at it. They've done it before you. So figure out what they're doing and do those same things for yourself. You know, until you've tested it and tried it, don't say, well, this isn't for me. You know, give it a shot, put it on your list. I'm gonna wrap it up. Really, this is all about getting to a state of mind that you're not trying, it's, you can't try hard to do well. At some point you have to just be in the moment. And that's, that's what it's all about. It's about finding a way to be in the moment without finding that way. You know, it's, it's often been referred to as a flow state. Flow state, like you're not, you're really in the moment. You're not thinking about what if this or what if that. You're just right in the now. So it's impossible to stay there, right? Even the best athletes, you know, I'm, Michael Jordan's a perfect example. Like he's not perfect. He's missed shots. He's botched plays. He's lost games. But he's the Michael Jordan because when it came down to it, when it came to those championship games, he was better than anybody ever. Like he had lots of rivals that were as good as him, probably as players. But when it came down to have that focus, there was nobody like him. He's mentally tough. He's there. He shows up. So you have to just practice getting to that state. And as long as, especially identifying, you can identify one time when you felt like you were there when you really were like, man, that felt great. I didn't have to try. Everything just was the way it was supposed to be. Identify that one time and then finding a second or a third or a fourth or a fifth time is going to be a lot easier because you know it's in you. So, I mean, the cyclist example that I would think of would be like Mikhail Kwiatkowski. He's so consistent. He's always there. You you get him on camera and he's just poker face. Like you can't you can't try to be that way. You just are that way by doing all of these things that I've recommended to you. So, um, yeah, we, man, we used to call this creative not caring. In, in performing, you practice and practice, you do the same thing over and over, and 
one, when you do the same thing over and over, oftentimes you can pick up little distractions along the way. But you know, creative not caring, it's, it's being in a state of mind where you can put yourself out there and just not really care what happens and just go with it. So that's what you gotta do on the bike. That's what you gotta do in your intervals. You can't just get into an interval and say, oh man, this is hard, I gotta give up. Or man, my power is dropping. I better just stop. I mean, nine times out of 10, that's the time where you got to just get the job done. So that's it for uh, this week. I, uh, I hope you got something out of this. If you want to ask about how I could potentially advise you to have a better approach and help your mental toughness, hit me up. Thanks for watching. See you next week.